It was last year, 2019, that I did a 50 minute keynote presentation at the International Toastmaster Convention in the US. Great experience. But in a draft, in one of the drafts of that speech, I wrote this paragraph. You know what, the actual pandemic, the most serious pandemic that society, that humanity is facing has nothing to do with a virus. In fact, no pharmaceutical organisation can overcome it and its cure does not come from injecting a needle or consuming a tablet. Those were the words that I wrote in 2019. Now those words actually didn't make it into the final speech that I delivered, but I look back at those words and I think, my oh my, if only I could have known what was coming. But interestingly, what I was referring to in those words have actually been made even more real, ironically enough, by the actual pandemic we have experienced in 2020. And so what reminded me of those words that I wrote in that speech, in that draft, came from the most unexpected place, is in fact this actual road sign. And I walked past it the other day, just on a morning walk, and I kind of saw it out the corner of my eye, walked back and I thought, wow, I've never seen the, a road mirror like that explained in that way or described in that way. And it's actually a visual representation of what I was referring to in those words, what I perceive to be society's real, most poignant pandemic. And what I'm referring to is that for so long in my life, I had a thought life. I had thoughts that would be considered to be not serving me very well. They were in fact quite destructive in a way. And they certainly didn't aid, or they certainly didn't enable my life. It was with the help of a friend of mine. At the time, actually, he was my psychologist, now my friend by the name of Greg Gardner. And he made me aware that my thought life, the way I was thinking specifically about myself, was happening because I had this hugely distorted image of me and who I was. And since that day, with the people that I've been able to connect with over the years in a meaningful way, I've realized that one of the major issues that we have in modern society is that so many of us look at ourselves through a very distorted image. We have a distorted lens and view of who we are. So how that distorted image in my head actually manifested were in these words to Greg when I was seeing him in his clinic. And I walked into his clinic one day, I said, you know what, Greg, I've had enough of being me. That's what I said out of my mouth. And in fact, in the years after that, I've spoken to quite a few people and in fact have heard variations of those words, those words come out of many people's mouths. And in being made aware of the fact, hold on a minute, I've got this like hugely distorted image of myself. I changed those words from I've had enough of being me to being me is enough. And so after becoming aware of this, being made aware of the fact, hold on a minute, I'm looking at life, I'm looking at myself through this distorted lens, this distorted image. Where does that come from? Well, the distorted image comes from our beliefs and it's what we tell ourselves, but it's specifically those things where we go, well, it should, I should have been this, or it's too late for that now, or how am I, or who am I to think I could be X, Y, and Z? And I thought, you know what, no, I'm tired of looking through that lens. I'm not gonna look through that distorted lens anymore because that essentially, the lens that you look through is what directs what you do in life. So I thought, nah, I'm gonna construct a new image. And so in constructing a new image, it's a process of really becoming self-aware and it's being willing to admit some things to yourself. Number one, it's understanding what your strengths are. What are your strengths? We've all got strengths and we've all got weaknesses and where someone is weak, you are strong and where you're weak, others are strong. So it all kind of works out in the end. But it's also understanding what your weaknesses are and being really aware of those and not looking at them as something that's bad, but just being aware of what you're strong at and what you're weak at. But what that allows you to do is understand where you can serve. Where, are you, where can you add the most value? And who is that for? Because in most cases, when we're serving, we're serving someone or some people. And it's understanding where you're able to do that the best. 
but it's also admitting to yourself what you actually want to do with your life. Where are you best place in life? And the key part of all of that is once you've made those decisions and drawn those conclusions, it's then beginning to take the action steps necessary for those things to come to pass. And so over a period of time, I stopped looking at life and myself through this distorted image, this distorted lens, and rather created a new, clean, straight, undistorted view, the real view of me. And what I've come to realize is that one of the most amazing opportunities any single one of us has is the ability to make that choice, to, to, to not allow that distorted image to direct our paths and in fact create a new image of who we are and what we're actually capable of based on what is innately inside of us to be able to achieve. So my call is this, let's leave the uh, distorted images to the road signs for now. Thanks for listening. Take care until the next one. Bye for now.